This is B, martial arts expert and the fighting type gym leader for the Gala region, but only in Pokemon Sword. She has been one of the most requested trainers for the Kinex Become Champion series, and after sitting on this footage since Valentine's Day, it's finally time to find out if B could become champion. To do so, I played through the entirety of Pokemon Shield as B, well, as a Pokemon on her team. I did my best to match the in-game team to the one she uses during the Champion Cup rematches and allowed for only one use of a healing item per battle, because who can say no to a refreshing bottle of Moomoo Milk or a nice warm lava cookie. <laughs> sounds to me you got quite the sweet tooth, stowaway Scraggy. I'm not a stowaway, and I told you, my name's Vasco. But if you don't have a ticket, you're stowaway. But if you're a Pokemon, you don't need a ticket. As long as your trainer has one, yes. She does. She? Oh, you mean me, don't you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I've already asked everyone on this boat, and not a single person knew about you. Fine, I suppose I can't just turn a blind eye to a lost little Pokemon. You can join my team. Yay, I'm so glad I ran into you and not a big scary sailor man. Although, I'm still not sure how I got here. And I'm not sure how you knew my name. Well, you are pretty popular. I've been training in secret with Marshall in the Unova region for the past three years. I doubt anyone knows who I am. Weird. So, uh, where is this boat heading again? You really don't know anything, huh? Not a clue. I'm on my way to the Gala region to participate in this year's gym challenge, although a lot has happened since I've left home three years ago. What do you mean? Hmm, so you've missed the welcome video as well? There was a video? Yeah, a bit of a public service announcement that they played for every passenger since we're almost there. Considering everything that's going on, it has some pretty important information. Here. Dear travelers, the Gala region welcomes you with open arms, is what I'd like to say. Unfortunately, this past year has been quite troublesome. Our new champion resigned shortly after one of his Pokemon went missing. Our previous champion is nowhere to be found. And to top it all off, a bunch of legendary Pokemon from the Crown Tundra have invaded mainland Gala and are wreaking havoc throughout the region, almost as if they're looking for something. The local Jin leaders have done their utmost to preserve the peace and safety of Galar. However, we ask that you exercise extreme caution when traveling. While we have taken measures to ensure everyone's safety within Winden and Hammerlock, as well as secure the paths along our railways, please keep an eye out for trouble and familiarize yourselves with the nearest designated shelters should problems arise. We do hope that you enjoy your stay here and have a wonderful time cheering on your favorite trainer during this year's gym challenge. If you have any further questions, please contact any of the league staff during your stay. We look forward to seeing you soon. When the boat finally reached Galar, B and I took the train from Holbury down to Motostoke for the opening ceremony. There were a lot of people lined up to see this year's gym challengers, which was a bit concerning considering how few of them there were. Apart from B, there was this guy Hop who was supposedly the previous champion's younger brother, Gordy, the oldest son of the ice type gym leader, and a guy with a funny looking hat. There were a few others, but they didn't seem all that important. The ceremony also introduced all of Galar's gym leaders, including the new dark type and fairy type gym leaders who would be making their debut during this gym challenge. After the ceremony, B and I I made her way to Route 3 so that she could catch some more Pokemon for her team. First we found a Machop, then we found a Pancham, and finally a Tyrogue, who was the hardest one to find. We definitely did not go out to the wild area where its spawn rate is 28% instead of Route 3's 2%. Please don't tell the league staff, they might get very mad at us. Since the Galar mines were closed off, we had to take a flying taxi over to Turfield and went to challenge the first gym. We started out the battle with Pancham, who used low sweep to trip up Gossifloor and reduce its speed, then did it a few more times to knock out the flower. Milo and his his giant con ball were not too happy about our tricky little plan, and they instantly knocked out Pancham on their first turn of Dynamax. Tyrogue was out next trying to fake out a Dynamax, <laughs> yeah that's not gonna work, but it magically managed to bulk through a max strike with 1 HP to go, so at least we managed to stall out the Dynamax. And now it is B's turn to Dynamax her Machop and attack with a series of max knuckles, boosting her Pokemon's attack stat each time it lands a hit. And oh boy did it need that attack boost. Thankfully 3 punches was enough to take down the Eldegoss and finish off the battle. And I didn't have to do a single thing. What an incredible gym challenger. Congratulations on your first victory, uh... B. B? That's my name, yes. Does that mean he's here too? Who? <laughs> Why, the little lost Wooloo, of course. Uh, no. The only Wulu I've seen since I got to Galar are the ones in your gym. Um... That's not good. I, I, I'm pretty sure he was supposed to. You seem a little distressed, former champion. I, I am, but don't worry about it. He, oh, he, here you go. Take this too. And 
egg? Mm-hmm. With everything going on in Galar, our ecosystem has been in chaos lately. But the local breeders and farmers have done their best to preserve the local species from permanent displacement. That's quite the honorable thing to do. Right? And since Galari and Farfetch were the first Pokemon to get driven off when the legendaries attack- I mean, passed through, they are now almost impossible to find in the wild anymore. So, the locals of Turffield bred a bunch of Farfetch and asked me to give each passing gym trainer one as a reward for their effort. Galari and Farfetch aren't the kind to run from a fight. It sounds like quite the unfortunate turn of events for these Pokemon. I'll be sure to take good care of mine once it hatches. And maybe, when I become champion, I'll be able to help restore their home on Route 5. That sounds wonderful! And now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to go call Alistair. And if you happen to run into a talking Lulu, please let me know. Alright, hmm. He seems to be in quite the rush. I know, right? But hey, at least he saved us some time with that egg. Now we won't have to search the wild for that far-fetched you wanted to add to your team. I too am grateful for that. Now, let us get going. Since Route 5 was one of the first places attacked by the angry legendaries, it has also been cleared and determined to be safe enough for travel, so B and I explored the area for a bit, battled with some of the breeders, hatched the far-fetched, evolved the Tyrogue into him on top, and set up a camp so that all the Pokemon on the team could unwind for a bit and get to know each other. It seems that B isn't just good at punching and kicking, she's also great at raising Pokemon. After all this training and exploration, we made our way back to Hobury and challenged gym leader Nessa to a battle. Hip on top takes the lead, intimidating Nessa's Goldeen and faking it out on the first turn. Since we are quite slow, Hip on top tanks a water pose and then dishes out some revenge, knocking out the first fish. Erakuda is definitely faster than us, so once again we just bulk through the hit and strike back with a powered up revenge attack. The giant turtle is a bit intimidating, but thankfully Hip on top doesn't get knocked out and deals some major damage with revenge once again. This is such a useful move. Although there was not a chance we could take a second attack. Pancham was out next as fodder to waste Ness's last turn of Dynamax, and poor little Farfetch met the same fate since the rain makes the turtle way too strong. B decided to play it safe and used her first turn of Dynamax to guard and stall out the last turn of rain, then she struck down Dreadnought with a max knuckle, winning the second gym badge with ease. I take this as a really good sign. After the battle, we were informed that these second Galar mines were also closed off. This time, we asked out of curiosity only to find out that both of the mines had a Reggie running amok inside of them. According to B's memories of the Gala regions, she said that Scraggy used to live in those mines and their outskirts, so perhaps I was attacked by the Regice inside and drifted out to sea, losing my memories from the heavy hits I took. After all, Scraggy tend to use their heads to attack, probably not the smartest thing to do. Anyways, we took another flying taxi back to Modestoke and challenged gym leader Kabul to battle. Him on top fakes out the Ninetales for some chip damage, then goes for a triple kick since B predicted that Kabu will try to set up a Will-O-Wisp instead of attack us, making revenge a worse choice. Once we were already on fire, Hitmontop went back to the revenge strategy, although the attack stat debuff from the burning made our hits extra weak. Thankfully, Ninetales only had a few HP left, so we could just use a quick attack to finish it off without taking any more hits. Arcanine was out next, intimidating Hitmontop to the point where any of our attacks would barely do any damage. Farfetch'd is out next, setting up a focus energy, while Arcanine sets it up on fire, then we land a critical rock smash which did not do too much and got rolled over by a flame wheel. While Kabu was busy setting another Pokemon on fire, we went for the low sweep strategy to slow down his dog. The second low sweep was enough to make us faster and the third one managed to finish him off. Unfortunately we had taken so much damage that Pancham couldn't bulk its way through a max Santiferno. Machoke was out next, Dynamaxing and guarding to stow a turn. Then it bulked through a Santiferno and hit back with a max Knuckle. Once again we were doing very little damage to Kabu's Pokemon, meanwhile he was doing major damage damage to us. Thankfully our second max knuckle put a decent dent in its HP, but our Dynamax was done and I was starting to worry. I don't want to fight that bug. Thankfully B decided to give the Machoke some Moo Moo Milk for encouragement and that healed Machoke enough to bulk through two flame wheels and strike back with a revenge, winning the battle. Revenge has been such a useful move, although B was not very satisfied with the rest of the moves our team had. And since we were super far ahead of all of the other gym challengers, she decided to take a break in a flying taxi over to the Isle of Armor to meet up with one of her previous martial arts masters at the dojo there. They seemed to have a super long discussion about something and that something was probably me considering the amount of times they looked over in my direction. I didn't mind waiting even though they were talking way too much because Mustard let me play Car Quest on a Switch. When I asked what they talked about later, B went quiet for a moment. Then she told me about how Mustard helped her evolve Machoke into Machamp and how Honey prepared a special soup so it can Dynamax, trained a bit with the one on our own team to teach it the move counter, something it wouldn't typically learn until level 40, but a a move she really wanted it to have. And finally, did a random merchant from Alola who was staying at the dojo let his duck trio teach our far-fetched Night Slash, a move that would help evolve this Pokemon much, much faster. We flew back to Modestoke, but 
were informed that the railways were closed off for a bit, so B decided to use this opportunity to go out into the wild area and train up her team a bit more. We ran into all sorts of Pokemon while she tried to get Farfetch to evolve. There was this Onyx near the meetup spot, a Diggersby which proved to be way too weak, a Mudsdale that proved to be way too strong, a Snorlax guarding the bridge and a Halucha near the Hammerlock walls. B kinda wanted to catch that last one but we didn't have enough badges. The wild area was definitely packed with a bunch of overleveled Pokemon, no wonder there weren't any other trainers around the entire time. What are you doing out here? Training, of course. Do you have a death wish? I knew the League staff were serious about safety, but this is going a bit overboard, isn't it? When we told everyone to evacuate, we didn't mean out here. How'd you even slip past the gates? Slip past? No, no, you are mistaken. We simply walked over all the way from Motostop. The railways were closed for a reason, Missy. Missy, you look younger than me. Anyways, why were they closed in the first place? Ugh, tourists these days. There is a Reggie Steel spotted in Hammerlock, so we closed all entry into the city, including railway, and evacuated everyone to their designated shelters while the gym leaders took care of the problem. Be sure to pay more attention in the future. Who knows what could have happened to you out in the wild area all alone? We were fine. Thank you for your concern and the information. So, may we enter? Ugh, the nerve. Get it together, Alfie. The threat has been cleared, so yes, you may enter, but be careful, please. We will. That guy really needs to chill, am I right? And what do we have here? Uh-oh. Hello, may we help you with anything, sir? Unfortunately not. I was simply attempting to discover the whereabouts of a talking wooloo that was rumored to be in Hammerlock. However, the town was thrown into chaos by a raging Registeel, but the gym leader battled valiantly to protect it. It was quite the spectacle. What a shame you missed it. Is it just me or is this guy talking a bit weird? Shush! Perhaps my search was not as unfruitful as I had thought. We have not seen the Wulu you are looking for. Now, if you don't mind, we'll be on our way. You have my gratitude, miss. <sighs> it seems there may be some sleight of hand. However, not all of their moves will be as unpredictable. What I must do next is clear. After walking away from the creepy guy, B made her way to Route 6, which has been declared safe for travel for the time being. However, there were some guards standing by the bridge saying that they'll only allow trainers who can defeat them in battle through to the route, otherwise they gotta take a flying cab. B being B chose the battle. Since these guards used dark types, it was the perfect opportunity for B to try and evolve Farfetch'd. You see, to evolve this Pokemon, you need to land 3 critical hits in one battle. And there's no easier way to meet this requirement than to use Night Slash against a Pokemon that resists dark types moves, a Pokemon like Stunky. It tried its best to poison us, but we knocked it out after landing 3 critical hits in a row. Machamp came out to face the Linoon, quickly knocking it out with a low sweep. With our bird finally evolved, we had one more trainer to battle. They tried to play dirty and throw sand in our eyes, but one kick is all it took to win. Having proven our might, B could now freely explore Route 6, and by that I mean she chose to spar with all of the hikers in the area and managed to evolve Pangoro in the process. Good thing I was on her team though, otherwise that Pancham would never evolve. She also caught a Halucha since she was impressed by the one we battled in the wild area earlier. After dunking on Duncan, we made our way into B's hometown, Stoneside. There we challenged gym leader Alistair to a battle. Since he specializes in ghost types, there was absolutely nothing Hitmontop could do. We weren't patient enough to wait for Alistair to hit us with like 20 hexes, so B swapped out Hitmontop with Pangoro. She decided to use workup on the first turn, just in case Alistair tries to disable our stronger moves, but he didn't, so she worked up some more and there it is. Now we can safely use Night Slash. Mimikyu was out next, bulking through a hit thanks to its ability, but it couldn't do much else with its weak slash attacks. Cursula looked quite bulky, but since Workup had doubled our attack power, we could easily one-shot it. I just left the Dynamax Gengar, who nearly knocked us out with a Max Ooze, but then was one-punched out of existence, making this our easiest win yet. That was... wow, I can see your skill for what it is. Thank you, Alistair. Seems like you're ready to take over the gym then. Oh, not yet. And why is that? Well, I can't take over the gym if I'm champion. Crumb. Good to know that Vasco isn't the one holding you back. How did you know my name? Oh, right. You forgot everything. You know about the memory loss, too? Yep. After all, I was the one who wiped it clean. You what? Why would you do that? I have my reasons. Well, you better start talking. I can't. What do you mean you can't? You're talking right now. So explain yourself, Alistair. I wish I could, but if I did, uh, he would find you. Who would find me? Calyrex, the king 
of Bountiful Harvest. Seems like you know what's going on. Master Mustard explained everything. Great, less I have to talk, the better. The bad news is, we let our guard down. I think we ran into him in Hammerlock. Oh, that's not good. But I don't think he noticed. Can someone please tell me what's going on? You two are sounding very mysterious and scary right now. Uh, Bea, if you don't mind. Understood, my little stowaway Scraggy. That lost talking Wooloo everyone is looking for is actually you. Huh? But I'm not a Wooloo, and I'm not a stowaway either. Apparently you were. Ahem. A talking Wooloo from a world beyond our own, traveling through many other worlds, seeking out a path back home, assuming many different forms along the way, and paying with your memories to prolong your stay. That sounded more like a ballad than an explanation. You came through our world almost a year ago, and traveled here with Milo. He even became champion thanks to your help, but your presence threatened the Pokemon Guard and Gala, and they began a rampage in search of you. So, we wiped your memory to hide you, and tried to send you forwards in time. Except time travel is not something any of us can just do. Gem Challenger Avery, nice to see you again. Likewise, Fabia. Now where was I? Since we couldn't send you forward in time, we just sent you sideways in space, while time moved on at its regular pace. That sounds ridiculous. I am aware. However, it was the only way to solve the problem at hand. We needed to make you disappear for long enough while we handled the legendaries attacking Galar and waited for B to return to our region. So you found yourself in different worlds, traveling with different trainers, unknowingly buying us the time to restore enough peace in this world for when you return. Well, things sure don't seem too peaceful, and I don't remember anything that's happened. That's because the king is still looking for you. His psychic powers allow him to read the minds of Pokemon. If you still had your memories, he would have located you the moment you set foot again in our world. The king. Was that the weird guy we ran into in Hammerlock? Most likely, but it seems he failed to recognize you. He might have suspected it was you when you started to talk, but that wasn't enough to tip him off. Oh, I'll be sure to stay quiet next time we run into him. Good. He didn't come after us, so hopefully we'll be fine. I should wipe his memory uh, of this conversation, uh, just in case. Oh no. You'll be fine. Enough of this sentimental talk. Alistair, do your thing. I I came here to battle you myself, not banter with him. Right. I'll just give you something to remember me just you sideways this. in space. They Guardian of the Ilex Forest. Watch over the king. I'm paying with your Don't memory. forget. Okay? After Alistair gave us the fourth gym badge, we made our way through the Glimwood Tangle. This forest was attacked by a Galarian Articuno, however, the new gym leader from Balanly managed to subdue and capture the legendary Pokemon. B stopped by the Pokemon Center to prepare her team a bit, since she knew she is at a disadvantage against fairy types. The battle started out with Hitmontop versus Mawile, both intimidating each other. Our approach was to attack with Dig, which could do some decent damage to this opponent. B decided to set up fake tears, shredding our special defenses, which made no sense given that he's attacking us with physical moves. And since he had wasted a turn trying to debuff us, that gave Hitmontop the opening to finish off Mawile with another dig. Bead's Gardevoir made sure to knock us out in an instant. Surfetched was out next using its newly learned first impression move to deal some major damage. Gardevoir tried to set up a future site, then hit us hard with a psychic, but we managed to bulk through it and finish off the second Pokemon with a Leaf Blade. Rapidash slashed back with a Psycho Cut, and then Pangoro dropped in to land a powerful bullet punch, but then got one shot by a Dazzling Gleam. That left just Machamp, who finished off the pesky horse. You might be wondering, uh, why didn't B Dynamax here? Well, that's because this new gym leader has decided to host his battles without any Dynamaxing allowed. Apparently, the other new gym leader this year is also having their battles be Dynamax free, and B here didn't want to appear inferior to them in any way, shape, or form, weirdo. Anywho, Machamp landed a powerful punch on Hatterene, but got knocked out since B has the tap advantage here. Thankfully, I'm also in the party and ready to roll. One retaliate is all it took to finish off his last Pokemon. Having acquired 5 gym badges, we made our way back to Hammerlock and took a bit of a breather again, visiting the History Museum, checking out some trainer battles in the gardens, grabbing some sweets from the cafe, because as it turns out, B also has quite the sweet tooth, and eventually we made our way towards the train station. Oh, it's you two again! Good evening! Are you heading out towards Sir Chester? That's the plan. Quite unfortunate we couldn't go through Route 8, I really wanted to look for a phalanx. Sorry, Missy. I've got some wonderful news for you. I'm going to stop listening to you if you call me Missy one more time. The name is B. My apologies, distinguished B. Route 8 has been closed to trainers due to several sightings of a Galarian Zapdos. However, it appears that the Pokemon has fled toward the wild area. So, if you wish to go and explore, I shall permit it. Is it just me or does he sound a little different? Hmm. 
You're right, but he did just give us permission to go to the next route, and I don't want to pass up this opportunity. I hear Phalanx can be quite useful in battle. Ooh, that sounds good. Does that mean you'll start using the Haolucha soon too? That's the plan. Now let's go. Ha, like a frost moth to a flame. For being open to the public again, Route 8 sure seemed very barren, but there were loads of Pokemon for B to battle and train up her team. We did eventually run into this really slow walking Phalanx and we caught it with ease. Since we had more Pokemon than space, B decided to put Pangaro and Hitmontop in the box and then let Halucha and Phalanx take their spots. I guess she wanted to change things up a bit, although something felt weird. Wild Phalanx rarely flee this fast, and that's when we saw it. The Galarian Zapdos. Those things run fast and strike even faster, which means our only option was to fight. But uh, how are we supposed to fight when our team is level 40 and this thing is level 70? Ah! Huh? Well, you look different. But I also feel stronger. Strong enough to take on a legendary. You bet. Okay, maybe not. They weren't kidding about this thing hitting hard. Thankfully, I know Thunder Punch. Watch out! Not good. Not good at all, man. Man. <laughs> Did you just use a revive? Those aren't allowed, you know? Nope, no revives here. It's like I knew I needed to defend, so I turned into something very fluffy that could take a punch. Look, I'll even use Cotton Guard to bulk up even more. And if it hits me hard, I can restore some health with a draining kiss or two. I don't think I'm strong enough to take it down, though. I guess that means I'll just have to catch it then. Catch it? Yeah. Gem Challenger Speed and Money managed to capture the Articuno and Mulchers that were causing troubles near their towns. And I am a candidate to become the next gym leader of Stolen. I should be more than capable of catching this Pokemon. Oh my gosh, you actually did it. Oh, I'm feeling weird again. Are you two okay? I got here as soon as I saw the lightning strike. We are fine. Thank you for checking. He does not look fine. Yeah, that's probably because... Shush. I already know his secret. We traveled together once in a place quite far from here. I have no clue who this girl is. Ugh, forgot me again. Be help, I'm scared. Stay where you are. I have a black belt in several martial arts. I will not hesitate to pin you down if you try to hurt my Scraggy. So intense. Sheesh. I don't, I still don't see why people like you. I wasn't kidding. Relax. I'm not here to harm you or your Pokemon. If anything, I'm actually looking out for him from the shadows. Well, you sure showed up late when we got attacked. That's because I got held up at Hammerlock by that staff member. I don't know what you said to him to let you through. That kid would not budge. Excuse me? He said the route was safe. And he told me that it's not and no one is allowed through. And yet here you are. I have my ways of getting around people. Now, if you'll be so kind, move out of the way. How you feeling, secret armor? Uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other secret armor around here? Um, I feel really exhausted. I think changing forms twice used up all of my energy. Twice? What did you turn into? Um, first it was a Kupfu, and then it was a Swirlix. And now you're a Scraggy. Yes. Did this memory wipe make you forget basic math? That's three form changes, not two. Hmm, considering the three changes you've used up in the previous universe, it sounds to me like you've just ran out. Huh? Ran out of what? Juice? Tea. Similar to juice, but better for you. Get to the point already. Ugh, you're no fun either. He had some of Opal's tea, which allowed him to change form, but he can only use its powers so many times. And now that he's run out, he's stuck as a Scraggy. To me, he was a Scraggy to begin with. Well then, it shouldn't be an issue, for now. Good. Is that all? As long as he's okay, yes. I will go and look into the staff member. Something about this feels very rotten. I agree. They seem to be all too eager to let me through, and since I was looking forward to find a certain Pokemon, I didn't think to question their motives. Well then, keep your wits about you next time, Miss Martial Artist. And you too, Secret Armor. See ya! What's her problem? I don't know, but I think we should get going too. I'd like to get some rest at a Pokemon Center soon. Understood. After resting up, Bee made her way to the Sir Chester Gym and challenged Melanie to a battle. Alucha instantly bounced up into the sky and knocked out Frostmoth with ease. We also did major damage to their Manitan with submission but it easily finished off our bird with an icicle crash. And since it took big damage, their Manitan entered its zen mode, becoming even faster and stronger. B sent out Phalanx next and decided to go for an offensive move, which was the right choice since Melanie tried to taunt us instead of attack. Ice Q has this ability that blocks her first physical attack, but then it sets up a hailstorm to regain the ice head and lock out another. We break this with ease, but that gives Melanie the opening to deal some major damage. And since her penguin is a lot faster without the giant ice cube on its shoulders, it gets 
gets to attack first the next turn and finish off a Lynx. Thankfully this Pokemon is super squishy without the ice, so Surfetch can come on in and one-shot it with a Brick Break. Melanie Dynamaxes her Lapras and fires off a Max Geyser at us, changing the weather over to rain. Meanwhile, we manage to do some major damage with two Brick Breaks, making Machamp's job really easy. Well, maybe not. Since Melanie used Max Resonance to finish off Surfetch, she also got to set up on Aurora Veil to decrease most of the damage we can do. But all this did was buy her an extra turn, and she's gonna need way more than one turn to change the tides of this battle. Since the next gym leader had captured the Galarian Moltres near Spike Myth, we were free to explore the waters of Route 8, where we ran into a Graplocked, the final Pokemon we needed to complete B's team. Except these guys were very stubborn and hard to catch, so instead we got a Cloptopus on the shores of Spike Myth. Then we challenged gym leader Marnie to a battle. Lipard tries to torment Haulucha, but it gets beaten to submission by a bird. Morpeko comes in to deal major damage with a spark, but we bulk through it and bounce into the sky. However, the little hamster is too quick to let us get another hit in. Surfetched has a different impression. Toxic Rogue didn't quite fit with the dark typing of this gym, so we had to think of another approach. It set up Swagger, and since Surfetched was so confused and hit itself, Toxic Rogue could easily finish us off with a poison jab. The Lynx came out and set up a no retreat move, which somehow did not give us enough of a buff to finish off the frog in close combat. Meanwhile, Marnie kept attacking with Venoshock. Then she healed up her frog so it could bulk through even more of our attacks, but we ended up knocking it out by brute force. Ayo, she's got a scrafty, but a shame that they're so weak in close combat. Raihan was the last gym leader we had to face, and he likes to do double battles, which is a problem because his Flygon's breaking swipe attacks render our physical attacking team useless right from the start. Knowing this, B chose to set up a sword stance with Haulucha and an Octolock with Graplock. This move stops the enemy from switching out and also lowers their defenses at the end of each turn. Raihan lands a second breaking swipe, but since we did that sword stance, Haulucha can do some decent damage with a flying press. In Graplock, they're just trying their best. The Gigalith finished setting up its Stealth Rocks and then used Rock Blast to finish off our powered up bird. Graplocked goes on the defensive while Surfetch swoops in with its first impression. Still not strong enough to take down Flygon though. At this point, it had so little HP that even though his breaking swipes cut our attack in half, we could actually finish it off. And since the Octolock weakened Gigalith's defenses, Graplock could hit it pretty hard as well. Raihan hasn't given up yet, using Sand Tomb to trap Surfetch, then finish it off with in-between turn damage. A Lynx rolls out to finish off the Gigalith, but gets paralyzed by a glare. Graplock? Still just doing its best. Right hand Dynamaxes Duraludon and hits Phalanx with a G Max depletion, but it didn't drain enough of our close combat ability to save Sandaconda. Of course, the Slippery Snake got to use a Nerf Power right before being knocked out, finishing off poor Graplock. She tried her best. It was time for us to Dynamax as well and throw some giant punches at Duraludon. It tried to hit us back, but Raihan's Duraludon cannot outpunch him a champ. He did, however, make a point to knock out Phalanx before we landed a finishing blow. Not like it made a difference in the outcome, but hey, I guess it improved his overall performance even though he lost. Having collected all 8 gym badges, we took a train over to Winden. Route 10 was closed off since there was a glass trier sighted running around its icy hills. Thankfully, Winden is the most secure of all the cities in Galar since it's both the capital and the location of the Champion Cup Finals. The other bit of good news is that the previous champion of Galar, Leon, has returned from his seclusion in the Crown Tundra and will battle with the winner of the finals for the role of champion once more. Our first match was against Hop, the previous champion's younger brother. He leads the battle with a double and since B anticipated that he would set up a Cotton Guard, she also decided to set up a Sword Stance. Our Flying Press wasn't strong enough to one-shot, but his Zen Headbutts were also pretty weak. Pink Urchin was Hop's second Pokemon and this thing is just as bulky, surviving a critical hit from a Poison Jab and striking down poor Holucho with a Thunderbolt. Thankfully, Surfetch could easily finish it off with a first impression. Corviknight was going to be a problem, but Hop gave us an opening since he decided to set up with Scary Face instead of Attack. His Drill Pack did hit pretty hard, but our Brick Break hit harder. Critical. Snorlax is typically quite troublesome, but B's team just happens to be really well equipped to handle this specific Pokemon. His Dynamax Rillaboom uses the first turn to finish off Surfetched. We stall out the second turn with a Detect and then use Octolock on the last. Once the Monkey comes down to size, Graplock uses Detect again to let the defense debuff stack on. And then he takes down Rillaboom with a close combat. I feel bad for Hop. This is the second time he's lost the Champion Cup Finals. Maybe he'll have better luck around the third time. And that just leaves that weirdo with the hat. Weirdo with a hat? I have a name, you know. He's going to be quite the tough opponent for B specifically since he specializes in psychic type Pokemon. Although I'm not sure why he didn't bother evolving that Ponyta. Halucha hit it with a poison jab and managed to poison the little pony, but that little pony packs a big punch, nearly knocking us out in a single hit. We attacked one more time, but just weren't hitting hard enough to win. B sent out Phalanx next and decided to play it risky. We survived a Psy 
Ivy with just 2 HP and then set up a no retreat to boost all of our stats. The poison finished off Ponyta and our powered up Phalanx quickly one shot Avery's Kadabra. His Swoobat was too fast and didn't let us get any more attacks in. Thankfully the weird effect on the field disappeared so Surfetch could come on in and use first impression to deal some major damage. And since she was bulky enough to tank through several air cutters we managed to finish off Swoobat with a knockoff. Avery Dynamaxed his Slowbro and set up another weird field which would power up his psychic type attacks. Luckily Graplocked is very good at stalling, using one turn to detect and then getting knocked out the next. Now we get to Dynamax our Machamp and finish off the battle with a Max Darkness. I guess B is well prepared to handle even psychic type trainers. That left us with just a battle for champion. It's time to see if B could hold her own against Leon. Typical of these runs, our lead Pokemon can do absolutely nothing against his Aegislash, so we just do a silly little sword dance and wait to be taken down. Phalanx is out next and since Leon thinks we're a threat he switches to defense position and protects. Meanwhile we use this opportunity to boost all of our stats with no retreat. Phalanx strikes with a powerful throat chop but the lack of throat on this sword makes her attack really weak. Luckily we're also pretty bulky so we finish off Aegislash the next turn. Mr. Rhyme is an odd choice this early in the battle but I'm not complaining since it was an easy KO with one Megahorn. Haxorus will be troublesome so we go for an all out close combat attack and get knocked out with an outrage. Surfetched can swoop on in and finish off the first dragon with a first impression and since it's fairly bulky it takes out the second dragon with a series of knockoffs. Inteleon outspeeds us and snipes our duck before it gets the chance to swing its powerful leaf blade around. He then tries to weaken our Graplocked with teary eyes but our counter to the attack debuffs is Octolock which lowers the foe's defenses. Unfortunately we were stuck using very weak liquidation moves since close combat will shred our defenses. We also stall a few turns out with the tech but since we couldn't outspeed Inteleon, Graplocked got sniped before it could engage in close combat. B sent out Machamp next, Dynamaxed and attacked with a Max Lightning, leaving Leon with just his Charizard. He also Dynamaxes and attacks with a Max Airstream but he failed to knock us out in one hit. Machamp unleashes another Max Lightning and it managed to knock out Leon's Charizard in a single hit which tells me everything I need to know. B can take on the Galar Gym Challenge and win against everyone, Leon included. B can indeed become champion. Congratulations, Gym Challenger B, or should I say, Champion. Chairman Rose, what are you doing here? I'm here to commend your success, of course. You can drop the act. <laughs> You're sharper than you look. Now that you've finished your merry little journey through Galar, would you be so kind as to hand him over? I don't know what you're talking about, but I will not be giving you any of my Pokemon. Oh, it looks to me like you've been deceived, dear champion. Show yourself for what you are, coward. Meh. See, that is no scraggy. You do not have a tiny talking Wooloo on your team. I said I will not be giving you any of my Pokemon. I heard you, dear. Then back off. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. I must eliminate this threat. And if you refuse to hand him over, I will simply have to use some force. Come forth, my knights. Uh, th this just in. A Regigigas, Regilecki, and Regidrago have been spotted breaking into Winden. Everyone, please proceed to your nearest shelter as fast as possible. Wh what in the world is that? It appears a giant Greedent is also attacking Rose Tower. For your safety, please, everyone, get to the nearest shelter immediately. Oh boy, he's done it now. Who are you people? Funny you should ask that. We've been watching you. And all the messed up things you've done. Everything I've done, I've done to protect Galar. I beg to differ. Oh my. Little one, you look famished. Have some tea while we talk with this gentleman. I made it extra strong this time. Thanks, Opal. Wait, I remember you. I remember everything. Uh, Alistair? I don't think that was supposed to happen. Seems like Cal Ricks broke the memory curse. So much for that plan, but I guess I don't need to hide anymore. That's right. There's nowhere left to run or hide! That's our line, actually. Get him, Avery. Telekinesis! You won't be going anywhere anytime soon! You fools! I simply possess this body to communicate with you. I do not need this man to execute my plan. Farewell. Oh, perhaps we've underestimated this foe. Or perhaps he's underestimated us. All healed up, dear? Yes, Opal. Thank you. Me too. I feel so much better now. Good. Uh, looks like we'll have to split up and take care of all the legendaries attacking Winden, though. Great idea, Milo. <laughs> Thanks, Mustard. Alistair and I will go handle the Reggie Dragon. Avery and I can handle the Regilecki. I suppose we should go show that Reggie Giga is a thing or two. What do you say, Mustard? Teaming up to protect Galar just like the good old days. Let's go, Opal. That leaves us with the 
giant greedent, right? Right. Since we specialize in fighting types, we should be able to take it down on our own. Now, let's hurry. Wait, you two. Huh? You sure have a lot of nerve talking again. No, no, it's me. The chairman! Likely story. Please, you have to listen to me. You have to stop Calyrex before he escapes. He does sound kind of different than before. Fine, I'll at least hear you out. But hurry it up. We cannot let these Pokemon destroy the city. Thank you. The legendary Pokemon attacking are just a distraction. Calyrex is using the chaos to flee Winden and summon even more Pokemon from the Dynamax dens in the Crown Tundra. You have to cut him off before he leaves Route 10. Hurry! Route 10, you say? Thank you, Chairman. Let's go, Vasco. <laughs> Too easy. I am happy to report that the imminent threat to Winden has been quickly resolved thanks to the combined effort of Galar's most prominent trainers, from gym leaders to gym challengers, and even previous champions. Everyone has stepped up to defeat the legendaries attacking our beautiful city. Even the greed and munching on Rose Tower was taken down by our dedicated League staff. I am happy to report there were no casualties. However, we ask that everyone remain cautious and make their way home while the city officials clean up. Thank you for your patience. Now, the only question the question is, where did our new champion go? We're here. Route 10. I did not think you would be this gullible. Gullible, you say? Correct. You've walked right into my trap. With Glastier by my side, I'm unbeatable. And you've come here alone. With him, your journey ends now, you invasive vermin. As one, my steed! Halucha, go! We attacked with a flying press, but we could barely do any damage. Meanwhile, he could easily take down our Pokemon with a single psychic? What was that chilling nay? Ha ha ha! Every time we take down a Pokemon, we get even stronger! That is the true power of my steed! Now whimper in fear! No way, Graplock will protect us? Uh-oh. Surfetch can use first impression and do some major damage. I can heal too! Knock it off. Phalanx, nothing's working. It's okay. Machamp knows Fire Punch. That should be strong enough to take him down. Alas, your attempts are all futile. Enough of these childish games. Hand them over! I'm sorry, Vasco. I'm all out of Pokemon. I thought that as champion, I could maybe protect you, but... You're not out of Pokemon yet. Huh? You have me, right? And I'm your Pokemon. But what can you do, Wooloo? Huh, <laughs> funny you should ask. I am just a little lost Wooloo after all. That's right! And this is where you end! No! <laughs> but I'm also secret armor. Wait, you can change forms again? That tea has never tasted better. There's also a lot more I can do, Calyrex. No matter what tricks you have up your sleeve, you won't be able to defeat me anytime soon. Good thing I don't need it to be soon. Leaf Seed. Such a cowardly move, but no more! You fall here! Yeah. I don't think so. Secret Armor has many faces. Now tremble at my Thunder Punch. Cease this child's play! Yeah. How about you seize your crazy plan to end me? Never! You are a threat to Galar! You must fall! Yeah. Maybe if you were a poison type, I'd be a bit more afraid. Even at max defense, you cannot survive! That should be all of them now. He hasn't turned into anything else. Good timing, my puppet. Heal me. Yeah. Huh? This isn't over yet, Calyrex. Just how many forms do you have? Uh-uh-uh. That's on a need-to-know basis. Now it's time to face my one-shot move. Sheer cold. Seems you haven't learned as much as I feared. You cannot freeze me, but I can freeze you! Yeah. Uh, this is getting pretty annoying. Please stop this senselessness, Calyrex. Can't you see I mean no harm? He's right, you know. All he's been doing is guarding and taking hit after hit. You're the aggressor here. Silence, mortal! Hey, B, can you pin down the chairman? I want to make sure he can't run off and cause more trouble. Sure, but it doesn't look like you can take any more hits. Maybe we should both just make a run for it. Oh, I'm done taking hits now. Oh, no, I'm so scared. Whatever silly little Pokemon will you turn into next? A rubbish, perhaps? Man. Both of you to assume I've only ever been a silly little Pokemon. What's this? Perhaps you're afraid of me because you sense some darkness. But I'm a lot more like water, Calyrex. Nice, clear, and calm. But you've thrown so many little rocks at me that right now, I am no longer calm. I didn't want to do this, but if it's a fight you want so bad, it is a fight you'll get. What can you possibly do against my triple iron wall? Surging strikes. Each attack lends a critical hit, ignoring all of your ironclad defenses. Ugh, I can't move! It's not too late to back down now. No, I must protect Galar! So have it.
My, my. I managed to find yet another way to be strong. Quite magical, if you ask me. Huh? What's going on here? Oh, good. He's woken up. Are you sure I just can't poison him? Poison? Anything but that, please! Calm down, Calrix. You've protected Galar ages ago, but no more. Everything you've done in the past year to try and get rid of Vasco has been cruel and destructive. We can't allow you to run around freely anymore. Who are you to judge me, plebeian? We're the champions of Galar. Each and every one of us has become champion, in parts thanks to a certain stowaway. Hey! Vasco here has done no harm to Galar or any of its people, yet you called him a threat. You had your knights rampage all over the region. All for what? Because he must be annihilated. Someone who possesses so much secret knowledge of Galar must not be allowed to exist. He will bring forth calamities and- Shush. The only calamity here is you. But I, I love Galar. I am simply here to protect it and its people. Is that so? Let me at him. You. Child, what is it you seek? I am the king of bountiful harvests. Here to- How could you? I am sorry I failed to defeat this. Shush! I've been working so hard over the past year to save up money and visit my girlfriend in Paldea, but finding a job was hard. Thankfully I got hired as league staff for the Champion Cup, but then you go and possess me and give false information that put this trainer in danger. That was necessary to take down the vermin. Did I say you can speak? If it wasn't for Clara clearing up my name after investigating the incident, I could have been fired or worse. You were this close to ruining my life. Apologies, dear child, but- I'm not done yet, King of Bountiful Heartbreaks, because then you had the nerve to attack Winden. Guess who had to fight off that giant squirrel and make sure no one got hurt at the same time? Wait, are you telling me you took down the Dynamax Greedent all on your own, Alfie? I- yeah. Impossible. A mere child couldn't have defeated my- Shush! I have something better. Sleep. I think he said enough. We have enough evidence. Such a shame to see how things turned out. I hear he was quite the kind in carrying Pokemon in the past. Maybe he just got a little scared of being replaced, but that's no excuse to become a bad guy. Speaking of bad guys, I still don't really understand why he saw you as such a threat. You literally didn't do anything. Well, he brought us all together, and together we did take down a literal king and his strongest legendary Pokemon. He is out of this world. Speaking of which, I can now access the portal that will take him home. You know, Oh, the one that was locked up for a year now. But I have spent so much time in Galar, so much time as a Wulu, so much time with each and every one of you. Galar feels like home to me now. But it isn't. When I met you in the Slubbering Weld over a year ago, I promised that I'd help take you home. I have to keep that promise, even if it means we won't get to see you again. But uh, I'll miss you, all of you. Even me? You're still kind of weird, but yes, even you, Avery. If I'm being honest, I'm a little bit scared to leave. Aw, come here, my little story. Scraggy. I know that feeling all too well. A few years ago, I was offered to train with someone in Unova. I had to leave the home I knew, and that felt very scary. But after a while, I got used to the new place. I started to feel like Unova was home, but then I had to leave again. It was hard on me. The friends that I made there. The environment that felt so familiar. The Castellia cones. Oh, how I missed those. But I had to go. I had to come back here. It was the journey I set off on, and that journey had to eventually end. Your journey in Galar may be over for now, but don't worry. You'll find a new home again. Just don't forget us this time, okay? I would never. So, I guess this is goodbye? Aye, it, it was a pleasure. Safe journeys, you little lost Wulu. You're always welcome to come back and have some more tea, little one. I've gotten so used to sending you between worlds that I'll miss this too, my dear friend. Seriously, Secret Armor, if you forget me one more time, I will find you, and I will poison you. Don't take her too seriously, Wulukins. That's her way of saying she cares. Thank you, everyone. I will think fondly back on our journeys together and face the future with my head up high. I might be a little scared, but I've learned a lot from each and every one of you, and I think I can face what's to come with a bit more confidence. Dovizhdene, skabibriateni.